Well, the car is back down on the ground. I've been driving it around for about oh, a week, 10 days. And uh, well, none of the parts have fallen off. It hasn't left me on the side of the road, which is pretty affirming when you're building a car by yourself. Basically, it doesn't look any different than it did when I put it up on jack stands originally unless you get underneath it or get under the hood. The color I'm going to want the car eventually is the color on the nose and on the hood there. And I blacked out the front end. And I really like that blacking out. Uh, I'm not 100% on the bumper. That may be too much black. I don't know. We'll just see about the bumper. I can tell you that bumper, though, was one heck of a lot of work getting all the holes for the bumper pad filled and flattened. I, I like the mounting bolts coming through there. I, I kind of like the industrial Mad Max look about it. But, you know, the, if I'd have left all those holes and filled them all with bolts, I'd have had something like 22 of them in there, which is a little overboard, I think. I still haven't decided 100% on narrowing this bumper. I would like, my original plan, of course, was to narrow it. That bumper has been lifted almost an inch and a half, and it's been pushed back in more than an inch and a half. But I still can only close it up about an inch, that inch right there between these two pieces which doesn't really solve the dilemma. It's still going to be pretty far out from the body, number one. And number two, I can't get it far enough back not to have to deal with that filler panel. And I really didn't want that filler panel in there. So I'm still at a dilemma over that. The rear bumper is easy. I can cut that one and get it to fit right in with the body, but you know, if you can't do both of them, why do it at all, you know? Then the front one would look really out of place if the back one were nice and tucked in. So I uh, kind of have a question about that one still. But uh, this is what it looks like at this point. The I just got the mufflers in it too. They are, it's dual muffler here. It's, uh, there are two Walker turbos in there. Two and a quarter inch all the way out. VHT black all the way through. It's a uh, nice system. Let's uh, see what right, it sounds like. This is the like. new exhaust. Two and three quarter stem to stern, top to bottom. Looks real nice in here too. Those are a couple of Walker turbos looped up over the axle, kind of 45 out, and uh, sounds real good. This is like the uh, third or fourth system I've had done by these guys. This is a rainbow up on Belcher, always do a good job for me. But uh, yeah, I like this part here, it's just kind of pinched down, plenty away from the uh, transmission lines, plenty of room around the oil filter. Good looking system. You can hear it has a little bit of throat at idle and I did want it quieter than the Flowmasters I have on the El Camino because let's face it, back of a wagon is just one great big cavern and that resonance would drive you nuts. When you give it a little gas it does get a little throaty on you but once it's idling or once it gets to cruise it settles right down. I like it. I pronounce it good. I'm not going to show you the interior because it's still just, well, it's still the interior that, and I haven't touched that part yet. Under here, everything has been finished out. And like I say, everything runs, 
Nothing has fallen off. It hasn't left me on the side of the road. Over the course of the next couple of months, I'm going to be driving the car around, just using it as my driver. And, you know, just finishing up a few things under here to make sure everything is the way I want it. There's got to be the intake finished out from here. It's going to go into here. Everything along the fender has been closed off, so it just gets cool air down in front of the fender well and behind the headlights. And uh, like I said, well, I haven't checked out the air conditioner yet. This is the old compressor. It's got bad bearings in it, but we're getting to the cool part of the year, so it's not high on the priority list right now. But otherwise, it's all in there. Everything runs. The idle is dead smooth. It's quiet. No hiccups. And uh, I, uh, I pronounce everything okay. The car has been dropped two inches. And it's a full two inches. <clears throat> it's a two inch spindle drop. And I measured it. It actually comes out to two and one eighth inch. And you can see the wheel and the tire tuck up in that fender well really nicely with that two inch drop. I got the rear dropped about an inch and a half, almost one and three quarter. And all I did there was take the wagon springs out and put El Camino springs in which are a little shorter to begin with and they don't have quite the spring rate so that did that right there and I'm contemplating taking some more out of that and uh, well you can see I still have the ugly wheels on it and uh, people have, have asked me they, they, they say Eddie why do you still have those ugly wheels on it when you have a set of these wheels and those wheels are sweet I like them a lot they are this one actually I've got five of them and they're they're, uh, they're perfect no dents no dings like the day I'd, they rolled out of the factory this one's going to be the spare I don't know if you can see it but here this is all here, here, inside there, that's all that kind of silver gray. The ones I'm going to be using, this part here, all of this is this nice machined aluminum like this. It just looks a lot better and of course it actually matches the center cap. That's the center cap for the other four. And they're clear coated so I don't have to come out here every couple of months and, and uh, buff up some aluminum wheels. The reason I don't have all four of them down right now is, again, this is a lowered car. That front drop, when you drop a car, your turning radius becomes big. And right now the turning radius, the U-turn on this car takes about, about two acres. This right here is a 15 by 7 wheel. The nice ones are 16 by 8. So that's going to be a lot more, it is, a lot more wheel and tire up inside that wheel well. So another thing I'm going to be doing over the next couple of months is deciding whether I can live with that huge turning radius or if I'm going to have to put another inch back in this car, which would really bug me because I like I like that lowered look a lot.